Quite a lot of what I record I wouldn't really call music, it's certainly sound. I love the sound of information when 56k modems got in their stride and fax machines. That whole kind of complex arrangement of pulses that gives rise to that signature kind of sound fascinated me, you know, so that's the sound of information. I just hear in detail. I hear in a multi-dimensional way, you know, it's aggravating. You know. I don't want that information most of the time, but it's there. Outside sound, occasionally, it could be called music. You know, you generally call it music when there's some sort of sense of an intention to construct a sonic environment. But not necessarily, you know, people could quite validly call birdsong music. Messiah was very inspired by that. <laughs> I can't help but think about things numerically. Music to me is numbers. Formulae are ways of combining groups of numbers, ways of combining patterns of numbers, sequences, you know, the whole thing. I think that's what makes it work for me at least, is what I see music in terms of a grid or coordinates. And the studio is the same. If I'm thinking about assembling a piece of music, you know, with, with a, a sequencer and a, a mixing desk, and a sampler and a bit of processing or what have you, you should shut your eyes and still be able to see the whole thing. You should see, you know every connection inside your head and then, then you can operate things really fluently. I've never really been kind of video oriented as an artist. I mean, there's always ideas on the go with Chris. You know, we've always got a little project. There's lots of little bits and pieces that we've done that we've not really put out. One day we will have more stuff out there. I'm the f***ing daddy. First 14, 15 years of my career recording a square push or what have you is very much seeing what I can do alone. So I had an extremely hard-headed attitude to it, trying to screen out as much as I could anyone else's sort of input, record it, engineer it, compose, play it, do the whole lot. But as much as I think that that was a kind of a valid approach for all that time, gave rise to some interesting stuff, nothing should become a permanent guideline, a rule that you cannot break. And it was getting like that. I've been quite reticent to collaborate, partly out of this sense of let's see what can be done in this ultra minimalist setup and also out of a kind of almost paranoia that other people would set me off course trying to push other people away as, as much as possible it's kind of ridiculous it is learning to trust someone and Alex is absolutely right he's brilliant an absolutely exceptional musician, but one of the funniest people I've ever met as well. I mean, initially started working with Alex on the basis that it was note for note replicating the drum parts on my tracks that we were using for the live set at the time. But now the relationship's developed a lot more. We've done a lot more playing together. We've done a lot of improvising. What we're doing now, I think, reflects a greater degree of his involvement, which is nice, you know, for once I can get someone else to shoulder some of the blame. The Manchester stuff it had grown out of what I started to do in the advent of the Go Plastic era. We, by this point, perfected the use of the LED screens. LEDs working on the basis that they show an image which is directly related to what you're playing on the instrument. So the idea of what we were doing is that we could sort of begin to improvise, change song structures around, and the visuals would follow us. So if there's an improvised section, it's completely locked to it. And that makes it feel so much more visceral, I think. If the pictures relate, the colours somehow correlate with how I 
see, as it were, those sounds, you know, then that's great and the whole thing consolidates itself. The magazine video, I had a big hand in that. That was using the LED mask, which is in the process of development. It's at present incredibly uncomfortable to wear. It makes you feel like you've gone insane from claustrophobia when you've had it on for more than half an hour. It's absolutely horrible, but it is amazing, I think, visually. So the idea is that longer term, whatever happens in the live department, whoever's on stage will be wearing masks which have an image displayed on them which relates to what they're playing. diversion which I've recently taken the kind of cut down show the leader one project and that's what I'm now concentrating on longer term is the idea of getting a band out on the road but this show came up and really wanted to do it felt couldn't in any way turn that down but at that point still there was no sort of real potential for doing the kind of full sort of live show with the band and stuff so chose a, a kind of intermediate path which was basically instead of five people, it's just Alex and I, giving him a load more responsibilities, playing not just an acoustic kit like it was before, but actually triggering loads of the sounds. He's got loads and loads of sort of samples and breaks and things, a set of DSP algorithms so that you know he can kind of warp sounds in real time. Like me, you know, he's doing the work of about three or four people in one go. It's just like revealing how much can be done just with the two people. I've built the set so that it is very flexible, so there's a lot that can happen on the spur at the moment. As we get on, I think the potential for it is absolutely immense. So this is the setup that the current manifestation of my live show is going to be using. All of these controls which are situated on the floor basically allow me to have a wide range of control of the sound of the guitar, sounds which are generated from the guitar either on a processing basis or alternatively processing signals which are triggered from it along the lines of generating MIDI from the guitar. So both uh, switches are ring modulator in and out. Uh, so that's... that's the... If I drop the pedal all the way forward, then that increases the modulator frequency of the ring mod. So. It's just endless, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of the things which happens more and more with technology, and not specifically with computers, but certainly that's a good example of it, is that things are becoming more streamlined and the ugly, or what I suppose people perceive as the ugly side of it, the mechanical side, the wiring under the board, the, the technology is getting so kind of hidden away that we now have these machines that kind of appear to operate in a seamless, extremely efficient manner. And that's a trend in the way that sort of technology is being developed, but it's not something I personally appreciate. I love to see both the function and how the function is realised. And exactly for that reason is, is why I don't just want to use drum machines, I want to make them from the ground up, like program it from scratch. That's one of the things which has been opened up, the sort of advent of the graphical computer music languages like PD or Reactor or Max MSP. They pretty much make a computer be whatever music mating piece of gear you can imagine really. So being able to assemble it piece by piece means within that software environment you've got any piece of music making equipment that you can imagine available. If it's written reasonably well it should actually open up possibilities which you hadn't envisaged when you wrote it. Mm -hmm.